Now that we've got all of the authentication and the blog control out of the way, it's actually time to look at editing a blog, actually creating a post. So what you see on the screen here is something called React Draft WYSIWYG. And that word WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. And what that means is that the whatever you put into that editor that you're looking at, or the editor that we embed into our React page, is actually what's going to be translated into HTML for you so that it appears on the page just like it does in the editor. I'm actually gonna provide you a sample of this by whenever we actually edit something inside of our embedded editor, we're gonna have a preview for it just underneath it, just so you can see it translating to that HTML in real time. If you haven't been following along with the series, you can still use this tutorial to use React Draft WYSIWYG and TypeScript in your project. As usual, the link for the GitHub repository will be posted below. So if you don't wanna follow along and you just want the source code, it's already ready for you and you can have a fun time exploring it yourself. All right, guys, let's get into it. So we're gonna to need to install a couple NPM packages for this project to work. We're gonna be installing react-draft-wysiwig, draft.js-2-html, and html 2 dash draft js the reason that we're using this draft js converter or rather both of those packages is because react draft wysiwyg is based on draft js and we can use any of the draft js plugins or extra modules to work with react draft wysiwyg and we're actually going to need these to translate the draft js code into html for us and don't forget to install the types for all three of these npm modules as well And once those are installed, it's time to go to the edit page. So as usual, we're gonna start out with all of our state variables. And our state variables are gonna line up with our blog controller. So much like the interface we created for that blog controller, we're gonna have some of these matching it. So five of your state variables are gonna be strings, and those are gonna be your underscore ID, your title, your picture, your content and your headline, all of them with their setter functions and all of them with the starting value of an empty string. The last state variable is gonna be called your editor state. And this is something we need to use React Draft WYSIWYG with. And the actual type of this one is actually going to be editor state. And that's gonna be imported from React Draft WYSIWYG itself. The default value for that is gonna be an editor state dot create empty as a function. Once you've done that, you're also gonna create a state variable called saving. It's gonna have a setter function as well. And this is gonna be a bool. The default value for saving is gonna be false. You're gonna copy and paste that. And then you're gonna change this to a loading state variable. And we're gonna need this for whenever we're loading up information when we first load the page. And that's gonna be set to true. Now that we have those, let's actually add two more state variables. These ones are also gonna be strings. One is gonna be called success, one is gonna be called error, and these are both gonna be empty to start. Next, let's get a user object from our use context user context dot user state. Next, import React's use effect and create this one with an empty dependency array. And inside of it, we're going to let our blog ID be equal to a props.match.params.blog ID. But you'll see here that we have an underline under the match. And that's because we actually need to import the root component props with the any and the chevrons, as well as our ipage props. You can just put an ampersand in there and this will connect them together for us. Back in our user effect, we're gonna to check to see if we have an empty blog ID or not, or if it exists rather. If it does, we're gonna set that ID to the blog ID. And if not, we're gonna set loading to false. The reason that we're doing this is because if there is no ID found, when we hit this edit page, we know we're creating a new blog. But if there is an ID found, that means we want to edit an existing blog. 
So with that, we're going to have to create a function that's going to be called after we set the blog ID, and that's going to be called get blog. It's going to be async, and it's going to take an ID prop as a string. Once you call that, create the get blog function call inside of your if statement and pass in the blog ID as well. Back inside your async function, let's go ahead and add a try catch block. Inside of the try section, let's go ahead and get our response. And like we've been doing before, this is going to be awaiting. And we're going to import Axios as we have been doing. We're going to pass in our method and our URL. Our method is going to be get because we're retrieving a single blog post. And the URL is going to come from our config, as it always does, dot server dot URL. You're going to do a forward slash blogs and then a forward slash and pass in the blog ID. So let's go back to our blog controller and make sure that that's what it is. And it is looking like that, but let's actually just add the word read here just to separate it out a little bit more and go back to your client side, pass in the blog slash read and then the ID. So it's a little more clear what we're doing here. After the response, you're going to check to see if the response.status is equal to 200 or 304. The reason why I check for 304 again is because some APIs return a 304 as a cached response. If we do find this, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be setting all of our blog variables at the top to a lot of the things that are inside here. But before we do any of that, let's check to see if the user ID is the same as the blog's author ID. If it's not, we're going to pass in a little warning statement of the log saying, this blog is owned by someone else. And if it is, we're just going to set the ID to empty for now. We're going to add an else block. So if this is owned by you, this is where we're going to set all of those state variables that we created at the top. So first, let's let our blog be equal to our response.data.blog as an iBlog interface. And the reason that we're doing that is so that we have the object types accessible to us. We're going to set the title equal to the blog.title. We're going to set the content to the blog.content. We're going to set the headline to the blog.headline. We're going to set the picture. And what we're going to do here is we're going to pass in the blog.picture and then or and then an empty string. So if the picture doesn't exist, we're just going to pass in an empty string. And now that we've passed in all that, we have to convert our blog data to an editor state. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top of the file and we're going to import two things here really fast after we declare our const content block. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to import HTML to draft.js and draft.js to HTML. We're going to be using both of these in this file. So let's just import them both right now. Now this is straight from the React Draft WYSIWYG and Draft.js website. So how we're going to do this is we're going to do an HTML to Draft.js and we're going to pass in the blog.content. Now we have the content block. Next, we're going to take a content state and we're going to make that equal to content state, which is something we have to import. And if we scroll to the top, we can go ahead and we can import that from React Draft WYSIWYG as well. But actually, according to the documentation I was reading, we can import this from Draft.js as well. And I'm actually going to do that because the examples that I saw and that I've been using use that instead. So let's change this to Draft.js. And even though you didn't install it, three of the packages we're using have it as a dependency. So you shouldn't get any errors for this. But if we do get an error for it, we're going to install it in a little bit. So if we go back down, we're going to do a content state and we're going to call create from block array. And then we're going to pass in that content block that we just created. And we're going to do a dot content blocks. Finally, we're going to create our const editor state. And we're going to put a little underscore in the front because we already have this variable named. And then we're going to do an editor state and then dot create with content and then pass in our content state. So now this underscore editor state variable is what we can use to set our actual editor state. And once we do this, 
React Draft WYSIWYG will fill in the content for us. In the else block, go ahead and set an error. And you can just say, unable to retrieve the blog. Or unable to retrieve blog and then pass in an ID if you want. And then you can go ahead and set the ID to empty. And then on the catch error, you can set the error here to the error.message. And then in the finally, you can set the loading to false. So if there is a blog ID, this will get called. And if it loads the blog properly, you'll be able to see the content. If not, it'll just set it back to the create state for you. So remember, this edit page is also going to double as our create page as well. Next, let's create a function called create blog. This is going to be async, just like the get blog, because we're going to be using Axios here as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to be checking for a couple little errors here. We're going to just make sure that we don't have anything empty when we pass in our variables to the post request. So let's go ahead and just make sure that our title, our headline, and our content are all empty, are all not empty strings. And if they are, set a little error saying, you know, please fill out all the required forms and then you return it so that nothing happens. Also make sure to set the success to empty here since we're taking care of that as well. I put return null here, but you can just put return as well. So if we clear this, let's go ahead and set the error and the success to empty so that they're ready for the new call. Set the saving to true. Next, you can add a try catch block. Inside the try block, you're gonna create a response just like we've been doing, and you're gonna add Axios in as well. The method here is gonna be post. The URL is gonna be the, the config.server.url. Here, you're gonna be doing a blogs, and then you're gonna be doing a forward slash create, if I remember correctly. You can just go back and check inside of your server controller here, just to make sure, and your route, sorry. And yeah, you can see we made it create. The difference with this uh, is we're actually going to be passing in some data. And the data we're going to be passing here is we're going to be passing the title, the picture, the headline, the content, and the author. And that author is going to be the user ID. So again, we're going to check to see if our response.status is equal to uh, 201 this time because we're creating. If it is, what we're going to do is we're going to set the ID to that response because our blog object will be returned to us. The saved blog is actually going to be sent back to us when we save it. And we want to save that ID. So now we're in the edit state instead of the create state. And we're going to set a little success message here saying, you know, something like, hey, congratulations, your blog posted or something like that. You can put whatever you want here. If we don't get that response though, we're going to set an error saying that, you know, maybe your blog couldn't be saved or unable to save. Again, this is total, totally arbitrary and up to you. In the catch block, we're going to set the error to the error.message. And then we're going to add a finally section here and we're going to have the saving as false. So in other files, usually what I would do here is I redirect them to the page or redirect them to the posted blog, but we're going to actually keep the user on the editing page just in case they want to just keep editing and keep saving. We'll eventually add a button or something for them to navigate to the index page if they want to go look at the posts. We're going to make one more function called edit blog, and this is going to be very similar to the function we just created. And this is going to be for saving our edits. I could probably make this one function with a little switch in it, but I'm just really lazy. What we're going to do is update the method to a patch and the URL to the blogs update underscore ID. And again, just to make sure that this is a patch, I'm just going to change it to a patch here because I like to use patch when I'm updating something. We're going to get rid of the set ID because we already have the ID set. And now I'm going to change the set success message to something like blog updated. And then that should be everything we need for that function. I'm going to add an if loading here, and then I'm just going to return the loading component as we've been doing in the previous videos. 
You could put a little message here if you want. And now it's time to get onto the good stuff. Let's actually implement this editor into our page. So this page is going to remind you a little bit of the login page where you're going to have a couple forms maybe of other login pages I've done from other tutorials. So let's start by creating a container that's fluid. And we're going to give it the class name. And inside of it, we're going to pass in P-0 because we don't want any padding. I'm going to pass in the navigation as I've been doing on the other pages. I'm going to call our header component. Inside of that header, I'm going to pass in a headline. I'm going to pass in a title. I'm going to make sure that the ID is not equal to empty. And if the title is not empty, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the edit your blog. And if it is empty, we're going to create a blog. Next, let's create another container. And this class name is going to be including our MT is equal to five and our MB is also a dash five. This is going to give us a margin of five at the bottom of the top. We're going to pass in our error text at the top here. And this is going to, this is going to have our error injected into it. Now let's create the form that's going to have a couple things in it. So we're going to create some form groups inside. We're going to have a label. This label is going to be for the title and we're just going to name it title. I'm putting a little star next to it just to indicate that it's required. Next, I'm going to input React Straps input. And this is going to be of type text. I'm going to name it title. I'm going to have the value as the variable title. The ID is going to be title. The placeholder is going to say something like enter a title for your blog or just enter a title, whatever you want. And this is going to be disabled when we're saving. We're going to add an on change event. And inside of that on change event, we're going to set the title to our event dot target dot value. I'm going to copy and paste this form group. I'm going to change title here to picture and I'm going to get rid of that star and just put URL. And that's because the picture is not mandatory. I'm going to change all the instances of title here to picture and edit it so that it sets to the picture to the event.target.value and not the title. I'm going to copy and paste it one more time. This time I'm going to use the headline keyword, change all instances of that. And I'm going to add this to the label as well. And this is going to have a star because this one is going to be required. I'm going to create another form group and this one's going to be called content. And I'm going to put a label by itself here, not for anything. And now it's actually time to insert the React Draft WYSIWYG editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import from React Draft WYSIWYG. What I'm going to be importing is the actual editor itself. I'm going to pass in the editor state as the editor state variable. I'm going to give this wrapper class name as card because I want the bootstrap card to be its wrapper. The editor class name is going to be card body. So it's a card body inside of a card. And then on editor state change, I'm going to have our new state be set to the editor state. And then I'm going to set the content to draft to HTML and then a convert to raw and then the new state dot get current content. So what this is going to do is going to take the actual state of the editor and transform it into HTML for me. So what I'm going to end up doing with this is saving it to the database, but I also need it to show our preview. Now I'm going to copy and paste in these toolbar options here. 
This is also taken right from the website. You can see the inline block type, font size, list, text align, history, embedded emoji and image. You can see all of these are the basic things I would want inside a text editor on a web page. Uh, this editor has the ability to have way more than this, but I'm just using these for now as they are the only ones I'm really concerned with to give you a good example because I don't want to just make this giant, giant ass toolbar and confuse everybody. So I'm going to leave it like this and we're just going to copy and paste this in. You can go ahead and get this right from the GitHub repository or you can type it out, but let's not get any more complicated than this for now. Let's just use it the way it is. After the form group, I'm going to create one more form group and I'm going to put in the success text. Our next form group is going to house our saving slash editing button. So this button is going to be a block type button. So it's going to take up the whole width and it's going to have an on click. And basically the on click function is going to do one of two things and it depends if the ID is set or not. So if the ID is set, it's going to use the edit blog post. Uh, but if it's not set, then it's going to use the create blog or the save blog post that we created before. And this is how it's going to know the difference whether to create a new one in the database or update the one we already have. We're going to disable it when it's saving. I'm going to copy and paste in this font awesome saving icon. You don't have to put this, but I like to put a little saving icon on this button. And then just like we did for the on click, we're going to check to see if the ID is equal to empty. If it's not, we're going to update. If it is, we're going to post. And then after this little variable statement we create here, we're going to check to see if the ID is not equal to empty and, and we're going to add one more button and it's going to be of a block type. It's color is going to be success. It's tag is going to be a link. It's going to be going to forward slash blogs, forward slash, and then the blog ID. And then the button text is just going to say, view your blog post. So when you click this button, you're going to be able to actually view your post. Now, once you've created that button, we're going to make one more form group, and this is going to be the actual preview. So how this is going to work is what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and put in a div. You're going to give it a class name. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a border and the border there is going to separate it for you so you can see the difference between the preview and the rest of the page. You're going to do a P-2 for a little bit of padding. Inside of it, we're going to have a div that we're just going to close off. And on the inside of that, we're going to dangerously set the inner HTML. Inside of that object is going to be an object with a property that's underscore underscore HTML. And you're going to set that to your content. And that content is going to be an HTML string that was provided to you by that conversion that we did above. Finally, at the bottom, export the edit page with the router from React Router DOM. You can see at the top, I have it with React Router, but you should have it with React Router DOM. There's also one more thing we should import just so React Draft WYSIWYG looks nice. It has its own CSS. So what you're going to do is you're going to make sure to import, and then you're going to copy and paste this statement actually you straight from the web page where it's just doing a react draft wysiwake forward slash dis forward slash and then the css file so make sure you copy and paste this into your project otherwise it's not going to render properly i did this the first time i skipped that step when i was creating this and i got frustrated for quite a while and then lastly like i said before let's go ahead and install draft.js even though it's included in some of the packages and it you don't get a typescript error from it uh, let's just go ahead and install the latest version of it so that we're using all of the most recent updates for it. So let's spin up the application, both the server and the client, and see what happens. Let's see if we coded it right or we just broke everything. So now, if I refresh the page here, 
it's going to say something like no blog post found. You should post one. And let's go ahead and click that post button and see what happens. And it brings me to the create a blog page, but I actually, I'm not logged in here. This route should be protected by our auth route that we created. So I think it's time that we fix that. If we go to our application, we can see here that we have this auth route actually input correctly, but it's not inside of a return statement. So I think that's where this error is coming from. So let's throw this in the return statement and you can double check just to make sure that the edit page is auth protected inside of your routes file. But I think this is it. So let's go ahead and just go back to the page and refresh once we do this. So I'm going to edit here and now it's booting me to the login page. So I think this is working properly now. So I'm going to just sign in here. And now that I'm signed in, you can see that I'm logged into the top here. So if I click post a blog, now I'm going to try and actually enter all this information and save it. So let's see what happens here. So I'm going to enter just a little title here and a picture URL. I'm going to skip for now, just put in a little headline. And then if I type in some content, you can see that it's giving me a preview below. And if I take this and I hit control B for bold or underline or something, you can see that it's actually showing up in the preview properly. You can see the emojis working. So that's good. It looks like the editor is actually working properly. This is awesome. So if I click post, you can see that the blog was posted. The button changes to update and there's another button to view my blog post. So if I click that, we haven't created that page yet. That's coming up last. But if I go back to the main page here, you can see that my blog is actually showing up now so that it is in the database and it is being recognized. So technically we did just post our first blog. So the final step now is going to be actually uh, taking that blog and at viewing the actual blog page itself, which isn't going to be too hard. Now you'll notice when I actually put in the, I'm going to copy and paste the Mongo ID here of my blog and pass it into the edit page and it should allow me to edit it. So let's see if this works. And you're going to see here that the request failed with a 404. So that means it didn't find my blog ID. So the either the blog ID doesn't exist or entered the route wrong. So let's just go to the actual server controller and make sure that we did this correctly. If I go to the routes for the actual reading portion of it, I'm going to just put in a forward slash read slash blog ID and save it because that's also what I have set to my user ID. So I think that's what I did to make it all the same. So let's go back to the page here and then refresh. And you can see that all of the content and even the preview loaded up properly. So that's very encouraging. So not only can we save our blog post, we can edit it and we can also edit it if we type in the proper URL at the top. And it's also nice to see that working because when you type that URL at the top for the first time, it goes through the whole authentication process and logs you in properly. So all of this is working nicely together. So that just about does it for this video. In the next video, we're just going to go ahead and create that blog page where you can actually see the blog post. And then that's going to be it. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning back in and we'll see you in the last video.